Tame Welker writes in, big time Rough Riders fan. Says, do the Rough Riders sign or let Charleston Hughes go? Sounds like Chucky's gone. Charleston Hughes will be sitting in that chair tomorrow. (laughs) That's an interesting situation, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It really, really is. I mean, a guy who's been at an elite level over the last number of years and just doesn't slow down. And the name value, you know, comes with a certain cachet that sells tickets and fan engagement and a community guy, you know, um, there's so much value to a guy like Charleston Hughes, but it's short-sighted when you, when you look at just the football team, right? And I, all, I look at it, and I would relate it to what we're talking about with the, uh, the Women's Hockey League, the NWHL. It's, it's very similar, very similar. You know, yes, you could probably let Charleston walk, bring in somebody cheaper, have okay production, and use that money and have a better overall football team on the field, maybe. I can understand the thinking that there's more than one way to get things done, but it's not just about bringing in guys to win. It's also about building brand and selling tickets and, and, and all of those things, you know, great hockey in the NWHL, but we don't really care about it yet because we don't know anything about them. So you bring in a bunch of no names and you, you, you just go younger all the time. It's going to hurt the brand. Charleston Hughes is a massive part of the brand of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, the CFL, and whoever puts them on the roster, no matter what the price tag is, it, it comes at great value. I had a guy say to me yesterday that Charleston Hughes is the second most popular member of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders behind Cody Fajardo. Riders can't let this guy get away, but it sounds like they are over 15 thousand dollars but we'll get the whole story from charleston hughes riders held a media availability on friday explained from what i can tell their side of these contract negotiations and then charleston later on in the day tweeted anybody wants to know the truth just let me know sounds like his side is a lot different than the rider's side he'll be in here tomorrow to talk about it um lots of questions coming in Mark Zosel says, Producer Clark, what do you think of Toronto's reverse retro jerseys? Well, you can answer him, Clark. Oh, he just told me in my ear he's not a fan. Darren, you are a Leafs fan. I actually liked them. I actually liked them. I thought they were they were kind of cool. Um, the gray is interesting. It's hard to read the numbers and stuff. But I actually, I didn't like them when they came out. I hated them. I didn't mind them on the ice. I thought they looked pretty good. And those Oilers ones looked really good, too. Um, I, I, I was the one guy who actually didn't mind them. Everybody else hated them. I didn't mind them. The Leafs ones. <laughs> well, here's the thing. They used former Leafs captain Rick Vive as the model when they announced the... Well, I guess I used him as the model. He's the first guy I thought of right. when I saw those jerseys. They didn't look like the same jerseys that Rick Vive wore. No. And Alan Bester and all those terrible Leafs in the early 80s. They didn't look like those jerseys. If they had been those same jerseys, I think they would have looked... Better. Yeah. Don Cherry didn't like it if you follow him on Twitter. I saw. Uh, by the way, the poll question, just before we move along here and take a break and come back with viewer takeover, which seems to have started early. Should a CFL team, looking at you, Argos, give a tryout to 56-year-old alum Darren Burns? The poll question is for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. On Facebook, Darren, can you look up for a second? 68% say yes. 68% on Facebook saying yes, give it to them. Yep. 71% on Twitter saying no. Why the disparity? I don't understand that. I know. That's wild. How much time do we break, guys? One minute, they're telling me. So, I, I voted yes. Darren Burns is a personal friend of mine. He's a businessman from Moncton, New Brunswick. I met him at Touchdown Atlantic. We spent basically three days together, and we'd never met before. We just got along thick as thieves. And so I'm pulling for the guy. And I didn't even know his personal story of being raised in orphanages in Toronto and suffering sexual abuse and physical abuse. But is the CFL obligated to give him a tryout because of his personal story? Maybe not. But because I'm a fan of his, personally and professionally, and I think the CFL could use the pub, I'm voting yes. I'm not sure. I got a vote out of you. I'm voting yes. You didn't get a vote out of me. No, I didn't. I'm I'm voting yes. 
Yeah, give them a shot. Let them play. Why not? If it can, if it can bring fans in the stands, awesome. I don't necessarily go along with the idea that you know a guy who doesn't really have a shot at playing in the regular season and having a roster spot and contributing that he should take up a roster spot of a young, hardworking player who's earned it. I don't necessarily go along with that, but if you can find a way to bring him into camp, why not? Add a roster spot for him. Find a way to bring him into camp. You said that to add a roster spot, do it. Bring him into camp. Let's have an exempt roster spot for everybody trying to extend their career or have a comeback. Yeah, anybody 55 and over. One last comment here from Mike Booth watching in Fort McMurray, Alberta. He says, any chance the guy wins the Terrence Nunn Award? Ho, ho, ho. You remember that award? I do. That is for the training camp MVP, the guy that appeared as the best player in training camp, and then when he gets into a regular season game, trips over his own feet and gets cut. The Terrence Nunn Award, which I named from what I found out the writers weren't that fond of that award. I thought, I thought it was good to give it to the MVP at training camp. Yeah. And they didn't agree. I know. I, I remember, but we always do that. We, we, we hear a guy's numbers. We see his stats. We can compare him to somebody. We do the six degrees of separation. Be like, oh, he put up numbers like Randy Moss, and he did this and this, and then he shows up in camp and plays well, and you think he's going to be the breakout star, and you get in the real game, and the live bullets start flying, and the guy just can't do it. One more tame Welker writes in and says, hey, do you guys think the Riders will bring in, bring back Thaddeus Coleman? No, they're not bringing him back. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.